Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're beginning a brand new series on how to use Inkscape to create scroll saw patterns. This is going to be a part of our classroom series that's being taught over at scrollsawvillage.com. Look for the Village University forum where you'll find these videos as well as written instruction, downloadable source material, and of course classroom discussion where you could have all your questions answered. Uh, we invite you to swing on by and uh, join us in this uh, fun little fun little uh, class uh, that we're teaching over there. And uh, I hope you have a good time with it. Now this class is going to be a four-week class with two lessons released each week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So there's going to be eight lessons all together. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's quickly discuss exactly what you could kind of expect from this class. Uh, lesson one, we're going to be talking, this is going to be the introduction, that's what you're watching right now. Uh, we're going to introduce you to Inkscape, what it is, and uh, where to find it. And then I'm going to give you a quick uh, tour of the user interface. Lesson two, we're going to be dealing with objects. Uh, we're going to be able to make shapes and uh, lines and we're going to color those and we're going to teach you how to manipulate those lines by scaling and rotating and sizing and uh, uh, many other different kinds of uh, manipulation. Uh, lesson number three, we're going to be talking about how to align objects. We're also going to be talking about groupings and uh, using guidelines. And then lesson four, we're going to be uh, learning how to build uh, complex shapes uh, by using uh, our basic shape tools. Uh, lesson number five is going to be the real tricky one. This is going to be the tough one for uh, many of us to kind of wrap our heads around. Uh, we're going to be talking about nodes. Uh, nodes are actually uh, part of uh, the way these graphics are actually put together and they basically uh, define curves and straight lines and we're going to be talking about how to manipulate those. And lesson number six we're going to be talking about text. Uh, this is going to be a pretty uh, straightforward lesson uh, but uh, we should probably discuss text a little bit. Lesson seven and eight we're actually going to apply everything that we have learned up until this point because everything we've learned up to this point is nothing more than fundamentals. So uh, we're going to be throwing a lot of information at you without really any real um, uh, guidance on how to apply any of these. But lesson seven and eight we're actually going to apply these tools to create uh, a scroll saw pattern. Uh, the first one on lesson number seven, we're going to be learning how to design a potpourri or a trinket box. And then lesson number eight, we're going to be doing a uh, clock project, uh, like a little desk clock that takes a little um, uh, a clock insert. So by the time you finish this class, you'll have two patterns that you have designed from start to finish. Um, and uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Uh, now this this class, I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning here. Um, this is a little bit more complicated than uh, GIMP. And it's not that it's difficult to learn, it's just a different way of thinking which um, will take a little bit getting used to. So the, really the first six lessons, they might be a little confusing and you can kind of follow along with them but you're not going to really understand how they apply and where you'd use them. And then uh, hopefully everything will kind of come together in lesson seven and eight as we actually design a scroll saw pattern. Uh, but after you go through all of these lessons, I suggest you would go back and rewatch these videos because um, I think everything will really start to kind of click and uh, make much more sense for you. So it is a little complicated, but it's it's not it's not terribly bad. Uh, just kind of stick with it. Uh, get to the end of the lessons. And uh, hopefully by the end of the class, you'll, you'll have a pretty good grasp and understanding on how to use Inkscape and pretty much any other vector-based program because, quite honestly, all of these programs are basically the same in concept. Uh, so you should be able to take what you learn here and apply it to other programs like Illustrator or CorelDRAW. Okay, let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, let's talk about Inkscape. Inkscape, uh, you can find the program Inkscape over at inkscape.org and you come up to this uh, this screen here 
and right at the top you have a uh, download now button uh, just go ahead and click that download now button and what that's going to do is it's going to save it directly to your desktop now I already downloaded it so I'm not going to do it but um, just go ahead and download it and install it on your computer now Inkscape um, well let, let's kind of let's look at the website first uh, Inkscape website does have a lot of uh, uh, tools and stuff like that and uh, good instruction if you look over here uh, you have like the download button we have some free clip art over here if you're interested in some clip art uh, we have some documentation and then we have some tutorials and galleries uh, so there's a lot over here to uh, kinda help you uh, learn how to use the program and there's a number of uh, video tutorials over on the internet so just google Inkscape video tutorial and you should find plenty there uh, YouTube also has a lot of Inkscape tutorials. Now most of these uh, tutorials probably won't apply too much to what we're trying to accomplish with Inkscape uh, but um, the type of tutorials that you end up finding are like uh, how to illustrate um, or design certain kinds of pictures and it's a little bit more graphic arts oriented uh, but uh, at least you'll learn how to use some of those tools and kind of uh, get you on your way. Now Inkscape is a vector-based program. Uh, it, it's very similar to programs like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw and uh, it basically uses a mathematical representation of an image or a picture. Unlike, um, very much unlike uh, the uh, raster or bitmap based uh, files uh, that like uh, Corel Photo Paint, Adobe Photoshop, and GIMP uses. Uh, if you remember back from the other class, uh, bitmaps are it's a grid of pixels and each pixel represents a color and when you combine them all together you have an image. Vector works much differently. Instead of uh, having a grid of pixels Instead, what we have is a group of nodes. Uh, nodes are a little bit complicated. We'll kind of get to that in lesson number five. But basically, they're like um, dot to dots. And there's a mathematical representation of how uh, the line goes from one dot to the next dot. And uh, that's how it remembers it. And uh, once you have a number of these nodes with all these mathematical computations, you have your image. Now the nice thing about vector-based program or vector-based graphics is that it is very easily scalable and for us who likes to scale our images uh, according to uh, our needs for a particular project uh, this works really well. Uh, another nice thing about uh, uh, vectors is not only the scaling but uh, it's also easy to edit. So let's say um, oh I don't know maybe you need a, a particular graphic a little bit wider in one area than the other area uh, it's just a matter of grabbing those nodes moving them over and then you have your edited uh, graphic uh, updated just like that uh, whereas uh, bitmap, bitmapped or uh, raster type graphics requires you to uh, erase uh, those pixels and redraw them in the uh, appropriate area and if you don't get it right the next time you gotta redo it all over again so uh, vector based programs are or vector based graphics I should say are very handy in that um, in that way uh, places to use vector based graphics uh, especially when dealing with scroll saw patterns uh, pretty much any kind of functional type item works really well for vector based graphics so Inkscape will work really well for things like uh, uh, candle holders and um, um, oh I don't know candle holders little boxes um, clocks uh, desk plates uh, word art uh, things like that uh, bitmap works really well for portraits uh, and portrait style cuttings uh, so kinda of depending on what kind of pattern you're doing will kinda of depend on uh, the program you use Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the user interface. Okay, once you launch Inkscape, the very first thing you're going to do is get this basic uh, basic window here. Now, my uh, my 
screen capture software is only recording a small portion of my window uh, just know that uh, I do have other stuff down here that uh, uh, you're probably not seeing on the screen but let's go ahead and kind of take a look at what we have here so Inkscape uh, opens up with a brand new window and uh, right in the center is your work area this is your piece of paper and uh, you could easily change uh, your document size by going up to file and then uh, go to document properties I work in the I live in the US so I'm going to use the US letter so I'm going to click that and you'll notice the background changes immediately so go ahead and click the size paper that you normally use and just close off that document dialog box and then you have your uh, document set up and ready to go so whatever happens to be inside this document is what we'll print so let's say we have a square in the uh, in the document and we have a circle outside the document uh, the square will actually print the circle will not uh, just because the square is actually in the document okay so just kind of keep that in mind um, we just basically have the basic features of uh, any program up here we have the file and the just general menu uh, I suggest you kind of go through here and just kind of read what's there uh, that way you can kind of see exactly what is available and what is not uh, right below the uh, menu we have uh, some icons that uh, uh, have some of the uh, more commonly used items you know new document open document save and print um, you could import export uh, undo cut paste uh, zooms um, over here we'll be talking about this a little bit more but these are locking layers and grouping we have our text tool, our line and distribute tool, and various other tools as well. Uh, we'll this area here, we'll, we'll go over here in a moment, but let's look at these tools down here. This is our toolbox. This is where we keep all of the tools that we'll be using to create our uh, patterns with. Um, we have a number of uh, tools here. We have our uh, pointer tool or our selector tool. We have a node editor. Um, we have a... Um, actually, I've never actually used this one, but uh, we have a zoom tool. We have a couple of shape tools here, uh, pencils. Um, okay, let's look at the bottom here. Uh, down here we have our color palette and uh, we could choose uh, a wide variety of colors and that's where we have our colors. Uh, down here we have uh, fill and stroke. Uh, the fill is, let's go ahead and just draw a square real quick. Uh, our fill is our actual color of the of the uh, of the design so let's say let's go ahead and pick green for our fill and then stroke is uh, that actually refers to the outline so let's go ahead and choose um, oh I don't know, let's choose red so if you uh, right click and set stroke uh, and that'll set the stroke at um, as red so the stroke basically means outline uh, right here is a little number right next to stroke that's the size of the uh, uh, the stroke width. Uh, you could choose uh, a number of um, any any size pixels. So if you right click, you could choose any one of these. So if you wanted a uh, oh, let's just do a 10 inch stroke uh, or a 10 pixel stroke. You see, it just gets a lot thicker. Uh, this is opacity. So you could uh, reduce opacity of the overall object. So that's uh, right there. Uh, we have uh, toggle visibility. So uh, this is when we're working with layers. I'm not sure if we're going to be even talking about layers uh, in this class. Um, it's not really, it's not completely necessary. If you're doing really complicated uh, illustrations, I think layers uh, actually uh, are quite useful. But um, uh, for what we want to do, uh, I don't think it's necessary. We'll just all work on one layer. Right here is a little description of uh, whatever tool we have selected. So let's say I click the circle. It's going to give us a little tool tip. Uh, so if we click zoom, it tells us how to use that particular tool. 
x and y axis. If you see uh, where my move my pointer around, you'll see the x and y axis change. Uh, you might want that, you might not. Uh, zoom Z is for zoom in and out, so you can zoom in and out there to whatever you would like. And uh, that pretty much covers it for down there. Let's go ahead and talk about this bar up here. Now this bar is your options bar, which basically means whenever you choose one of these tools, let's say we choose the circle, we have new options. Okay. If we choose the node editor, these are the options for the node editor. And uh, pretty much goes the same for just about any one of these tools. Uh, this will change from uh, uh, depending on what tool you have selected. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, let's talk about dialog boxes because uh, these dialog boxes are going to come up from time to time. Uh, if you uh, select any one of these, uh, it's going to put all of our dialog boxes over here. And uh, I have the Align and Distribute dialog box up. I just clicked this button and we'll talk about Align and Distribute a little bit later. But uh, this is where all of our options are for that particular tool. Uh, we could, after we're done there, we could either click the little X and close it up. Or we could click the little arrow and it will collapse it onto the side here as like a little button. So next time we need it, just click it and it opens up. Uh, you have a number of these. Uh, let's see if I can find some more. Um, well, let's see here. I know of one that might be pretty good. So if we click the fill, it's going to give us our fill and stroke dialog box. And if you notice, it kind of pushed down the align and distribute box. So if we scroll down here, you can see our align and distribute. So you could keep those up and just kind of scroll to whatever tool you'll need, or you could collapse them in as a button. And as you can see, the buttons are available right there, so we could just open those up as needed. There are times when uh, it'll pop up an actual dialog box or a pop-up box of some sort. Uh, let's this one here is a pop-up dialog box. It just kind of floats in the center there. And uh, we could use our, uh, our tools here. And when we're done, we could either close it here. Or if you want it as a, uh, as a button on the side, you could click this button. And then when you're ready again, it'll pop it right back up. So that's there as well. And that's pretty much it. This is kind of our work area. Uh, a lot of times the way I'll work is I'll, uh, I'll work off the actual piece of paper, uh, get all of my pieces together, and when I am ready, I'll move it onto the piece of paper and center it up, and then uh, print it out, and then I'll be able to have the pattern that I have um, created, printed out, and ready for my next project. Um, this one was a pretty quick one. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to uh, know about the user interface. Uh, I suggest you kind of go through here, uh, look through each one of these menu buttons, and uh, just kind of see what's there. That's uh, one of the first things I always do when learning a new program. Uh, you could kind of see what's available, and it'll kind of give you a good idea of what the program could do. Uh, then uh, kind of go through um, these tools and kind of look at what kind of options it gives you up here in the toolbar and uh, see what that's a, uh, what that does and then just start playing with some of these tools you know just kinda just mess around with them and uh, it'll kind of uh, uh, make you a little bit more familiar with uh, some of the options that this uh, program has uh, also try right clicking on things uh, that'll give you uh, even more options and uh, so just kind of uh, spend a little bit of time exploring and uh, next lesson we'll actually be talking about uh, making shapes and manipulating those shapes so tune in next time and uh, we'll start getting into the nitty-gritty of things 
I hope you enjoyed this installment of our continuing classroom series on how to use Inkscape to create scroll saw patterns. You can find this lesson and others over at scrollsawvillage.com in the Village University Forum. There you'll find videos, written instruction, downloadable source material, and of course classroom discussion where you could have all your questions answered. This video series is produced by Scrollsaw Goodies in association with Scrollsaw Village. Be sure to stop by and say hi, and until next time, happy scrolling.